the ISS, the International Space Station, Humanity's Laboratory in the Stars. Unsurprisingly, it needs computers to run and function and stuff. If you're a ThinkPad fan, though, you might have seen one particular computer. It's like the greatest ad, in a way. Uh, if it's good enough for space, it's good enough for me. But what are those used for anyway? Do they steer the station? Play solitaire? How do computers work on the ISS in general? Well, I'll answer it in this video. Oh, and a huge thanks to spaceref.com. It's really like my main source for this. Uh, it's so good for such an obscure topic too. As well as this Quora answer from Robert Frost. Uh, check those out. It's pretty much I'm only summarizing and trying to, you know, entertain. I suppose? There are VMCs, or Vehicle Management Computers, about six of them. The American segment has three, and the Russian segment also has three. The US ones work out all at the same time, but they aren't working simultaneously. One is primary, one is the backup, and the other is the standby. While the Russian ones in the Russian segment are called CVM, Centralna Vyčislitelna Mašina, the remarkably uncreative name meaning Central Computing Machine. There are three of them, and they all work at the same time, unlike the US ones, distributing and assigning tasks to different ones. Both sets of three machines run their respective segments. The two are connected via a control bus, with the American one taking uh, the American side, uh, and it is the bus controller also. These aren't the laptops you're looking for. No, really, they're not. But these are important computers because that's going to come in later so i had to explain it and also i like explaining stuff anyway these uh computers are built into the station itself and are connected to all the vehicle hardware such as thrusters uh astronauts and cosmonauts and whoever else don't interact with those there's no monitors no keyboards they're just mostly custom-built circuit boards and processors, computing stuff on what I imagine to be a RISC-V architecture, but they run main software that controls the station. Laptops connected directly to the station altogether are referred to as the PCS, Portable Computing System. Both in the US segment and the Russian segment, they run on Linux, and as of 2015, it appears to have been Debian 6, and uh, it serves as remote terminals deployed throughout the ISS. They present those aboard the station with a GUI to allow the crew to view telemetry from the VMCs, as well as uh, other systems on the ISS, and use that to interact with various systems. So yeah, you could be flying the ISS with a ThinkPad, uh, running Linux, maybe. Though in all fairness, the station rarely needs to be manually flown, it should ideally just stay in orbit, sans occasional spin due to misfiring thrusters, spinning the stations of 540 degrees and leaving it upside down. This is the kind of scenario I'd imagine the stationers would use the aforementioned telemetry system in to detect and correct with maneuvers uh, and move the station back to its original spot and original rotation and all that. Last but not least, there's station support computers. Those are not directly hooked up to the ISS and serve a supporting role in this holy trinity. There's probably more to it than three components. I'm summarizing, simplifying, I'm learning, you're learning, we're enjoying it, right? Let me know in the comments. Uh, whether it's sending emails, you know, you, you still need to send emails in space, get dick enlargement pill ads in your space inbox, uh, whether it's sending emails, watching videos, not of cats usually, but of procedures the crew must perform, as well as interact with the hardware, like the robotic arm, and use software for scientific experiments and such. This is the majority of the ThinkPads you tend to see in those pictures. It's not confirmed, but judging by the user interface we see on the screen of those ThinkPads, we can safely say that these are most likely just those support laptops, and uh, they apparently have a printer up there connected to those support printers. Honest to God, paper, ink, HP printer, which uh, um, as someone who's worked in an office before, it makes me feel strange things. Well, here's to hoping they don't run out of cyan. So I could end the video here, but let's talk about it some more because I feel like it. 
Uh, what about maintenance? In 2018, one of the Tevaem computers had to be restarted after a failure on the 6th of November. The restart occurred on the 8th of November. The failure itself, thanks to redundancy, did not affect the station much. It could continue operating on the two remaining ones. In the 2010s, a need arose for upgrading the Russian Zvezda module as it was quite a hassle sending back broken parts to Earth and having them fixed and sent back. The cosmonauts and astronauts trained to actually do the repair and weightlessness uh, inside the station. Mind you, the computers were never built for that purpose, with some parts using rather small screws or even glued in. The new DMS module, the one that needed to be replaced, was created by the ESA uh, and sent up to the ISS in 2018. The board in question was replaced in January 2019. Uh, after several tests and training for the procedure, including using a failed computer as a trial run, performed the training in space, and you know, that was quite difficult, it was like surgery in there, uh, you know, doing it in weightlessness, they weren't actually sure the computer was functioning after they performed the procedure. Uh, they knew it survived, but not that it was, you know, fit for purpose, as the British would say. Uh, think of it as if you just replaced some RAM sticks and you just haven't really run them tests yet. You know, it, it looks fine, but who knows what kind of dirty secrets those RAM sticks are hiding. Eventually, in December of 2019, it was confirmed to be working and all was well. And I don't mean to give the impression that space computers just break and break all the time. The universe just hates electronics too, you gotta remember that. In fact, in 2017, computers co-developed by HP and NASA were sent to the ISS for testing as to the feasibility of commercial off-the-shelf systems in space. There were Intel Xeon powered rack servers. Why is it so difficult to operate computers in space? Well, radiation amongst other things. Anyway, back to ThinkPads. NASA often gets its laptops originally off the shelf and that's kind of how you see the ThinkPads but uh, there's more to it than that. You can't exactly grab an off-the-shelf ThinkPad and take it into space. Not gonna work for reasons I'm about to get into. So essentially, there's quite a lengthy process. Uh, it's often why NASA uses older models of computers rather than the most modern ones. Likely they were already being tested and modifications were being made for them to ensure that they would be space ready. NASA used ThinkPad 700 60 XD. Boy, what catch what a catchy name to start off with. The main modification carried out to them is summarized as follows. Power. Unlike the Mother Earth, where current flows in silky smooth 230 volt AC at 50 hertz or 120 volts at 60 hertz in that one weird spot we don't talk about. ISS power is built different. A 28 volt DC, since you don't have to transport it over such long distances, any laptop or gadget the astronaut need to take with them has to have that modified power supply to be able to consume juice in that format, like me and a Capri Sun. Same thing actually goes for the space shuttle. Not, not the Capri Sun part, but you get it. Cooling. So unlike guns that stay cool without explanation and for all mankind, by the way, great show, check it out. I'm not throwing shade, not enough people are watching it. This is not a sponsor spot, just enjoy it. It's a great show, talk to me about it, spam memes of it to me. So an Apple TV Plus. Uh, cooling is way different in lower pressure atmospheres and it becomes a problem even on the space shuttle and in the ISS for one, dumping excess heat in closed environments that when you have microgravity, the process of hot air rising and cool air falling to the ground just doesn't happen as much. By the way, did anyone else's parents tell them not to play on the floor as kids? You know, because it was like marginally closer to the ground? Just me? Hmm. And there's other modifications too, but that's a discussion for another time. Thank you for watching. I don't usually do space videos unless they're computer videos, uh, but if this video is interesting to you, please do leave a comment below and a thumbs up if there's interest. I could continue, do a second part, discuss more in depth architecture of the computers involved etc maybe do some historical stuff more retro themed uh, apollo whatever you want um yeah and of course 
Uh, thanks to the sources again that I mentioned before. I'm kind of a nerd for this sort of stuff, but it's safe to say this is not my area of expertise. And because like I'm a bit of a nerd, but that's about it. You know, I played Kerbal Space Program for a bit, but that's about it. So if there's any any corrections, uh, please leave a comment below, and I'll be sure to read it. And also uh, enjoy the rest of my videos for all time. Laptops connected directly to the station 